and welcome to another episode of Foo Bar. In today's video I'm going to do a video about API keys and usage plans using API Gateway and serverless framework. If you are interested in watching more content about serverless, cloud or software engineering practices you should subscribe in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started! <laughs> Today I want to talk about a feature of API Gateway that I like and I find this very practical, that is API keys and usage plans. So let's start by defining what is an API key. An API key is a secret that we give to our clients and then they can use that secret to access our service. One important thing to have in mind is that API keys are good for identification but not for authorization, meaning that your system security should not be based on these API keys. AWS provide other mechanisms to do this and also we have been be using like the token machines and we can see the authorizers and things like that that you can use for providing this type of authorization but API keys are for identification and if you combine them we use plans that usage plans are one of the services from AWS in API gateway that will allow you to identify these customers and provide different usage of your APIs so you can create usage plans for customers that are like basic level that they will have very little amount of requests that they can do per day, per month, or per week in your system and they cannot do very bursty operations so they cannot push 200 requests per second, they might be only able to push 10 requests per second and then you might have some premium customers that will be able to perform millions of requests per day and they might be able to perform thousands of requests per second into your system and usage plans will give you this possibility in your system. So with these two features combined, API Gateway and Usage Plan, you can monetize on your APIs in different ways for different clients. In this video I want to show you how to create a usage plan and API Gateway from scratch using the serverless framework and how to test it. So let's get to it. So let's get started by creating a new project. As always, we make a new directory and we put a name to it. I will put serverless API key test. You can put any name you want to the project. I just get into that directory and then I create a new serverless framework project starting with the template from AWS node and I will name it the same as the directory. It's easier for me to find later. After that is done, then I will create the node project as we do it always npm init dash yes and then I will open in Atom and then I'm in that project. We go to the serverless YAML, I will remove all these comments to make it easier to see everything in one screen. You can leave them, it's not mandatory but they bother me and it's nicer when I can see everything in one screen. Because today the work we are going to do is going to be in the serverless YAML. So first thing we want to do is we want to create an API gateway event in our function, the one that comes by default, the hello is enough, so we will just create uh, an API gateway in the path hello with the method get that will trigger that lambda that is not doing much, it's just printing something in the response. We can change it to print something, I don't know hello function was called. We really don't care about this part. Today we are working in the serverless YAML. All the work we are going to do is there. So now we can deploy and we can test that that's working. I will speed this up for you but it will take a while as always. And deployment finish. We get the URL that we can paste in our postman and we can try that that's working. Yes, we get the hello function was called and the whole event object. The next thing we want to do is to define the API keys. So we are going to our serverless YAML and we are going to create an API key and we are going to put a name to it. Serverless API key, test API key. For example, I put the name of the project and then API key. And then we can deploy and we can try it in the postman that if we do the call without the API key then this doesn't work. So I will speed the deployment up 
And now when we get the serverless information, service information after the deployment is done, we can see we have one API key there that we can use. So let's go to Postman with that URL. Let's put X API key, that is the header, and let's copy paste that API key we get. And then we see that the response is coming. If we remove the header, then we get a forbidden. Good. So far so good. Now let's go back to our serverless YAML and add a user usage plan. To add a usage plan, we also put it under the provider. With the usage plan, we can make a quota that has a limit of 10 requests per day. I will leave you the documentation for this in the description box. And also the code will be available so you know how to do this. And then we have the throttle, that is the amount of burst and the rate limit. So that's also limited to 10 because 10 is very small. But if you want, you can put it bigger. For example, a thousand requests per day and a burst of 10 requests and things like that. You can do whatever is good for your use case. I put a quota of 10 so we can try it very easily and we can try it in Postman and get the limit exceeded. So now after we put this in place, then it's as simple as deploying and testing it in Postman. And now if we run this 10 times with the API key in place, in the 11th time you will get the error limit ex exceeded. And now your usage plan is in place. So it's very, very simple. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, or things you would like to see in the future, just leave it in the comment box below. I like to hear what you want to watch. And around here, there are other videos from my channel to you for you to watch. So go ahead, click and keep on watching, and I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao!